So let's just start with this spectacular idea of generalizing linear regression using some correlations in the noise. So I'm going to go through this code instead of writing in real time so the videos are shorter. So let's load these libraries and I'm going to use this, this data set that I've used before which is the Spanish economy data set. Okay, so we plot the population last time and we discussed this idea using the composition that we have some sort of a steady increase until the 1980s, then a kind of plateau, then the economic expanse could explain this blow up in the population, and then economic financial crisis and, this, and then this drop down in the population. Okay, so now, now let's go to plot the logarithm of GDP. And here we go. So you can see you have this shape. You can see, of course, if you go back, that this is not a linear function, but a kind of linear regression can show the overall trend. And again, if you take a look at this, of course, the, the GDP is not growing linearly. Uh, actually, this, is, this would be exponentially because this is a logarithm, but we have also a plateau here. So if we plot the population, let me show you this here. If we plot the population in the horizontal axis and log 10 GDP in the vertical axis, we have something like this. Actually, you can go back to my video on ggplot and non-parameter regression, and you can see that I'm using the splines here in order to capture this trend. Okay, and you can see here now again that the log GDP is kind of correlated with the population, and of course this correlation is not perfect. And actually this looks pretty quadratic, so this is not linear. So I'm going to, to cut in the year 2000, if you go back to this figure, it looks like until year 2000 the, the relation was kind of good. So I'm defining this variable y, and I'm again plotting this, you can see that now this is almost linear, so this could work, okay, just for the sake of, of the demonstration. So I'm going to define this new variable, economy 2000, which is all the values in the data set before that time, and then I'm going to do a linear regression, a basic linear regression fit. Again, let's take a summary. If you multiply this by, uh, sorry, this by two, you see that this is uh, not, not, not comparable to this one, and this is why this is so uh, significant, and the same with the slope. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Actually, R squared is pretty large, so you could you could say that 97% of the increase in the logarithm of GDP could be explained by population alone. So this is a kind of bold statement, but but you could explain all the microeconomy just taking a look at the population. Okay, let's take a look at the residuals. Okay, and you see something interesting there. So you can see that. This very simple linear model is not capturing a couple of things. It's not capturing the, the part of the partial error correlation function, so there is some uh, moving average part that we have to take into account. And also you can see this kind of trend. What was an artifact actually of having an overall trend in the series. So if you go back to the series, you can see that we have this increasing, this increasing time on, on the population in this case. And this increase is messing up with the error correlation function. So let's take the derivative here and take a look again. And this is much better, so you can see that all the correlations are between the dashed blue lines, meaning that this is basically noise. But we still have some bar here at lag 1 for the PAS ACF, and also a lag 1 for the error correlation function. So that, that could mean that we have a moving average or an error regressive of order 1. Okay, so let's take a look at those models. And here you can be lazy and run an Oro Arima, so you can take a look at that, so you can run that by yourself. Then I'm going to check directly Check residuals. Okay, and I'm going to feed Arima to the data set. So remember to the residuals. And I'm going to use order C100. Okay, we still have this part here, so this is not working. Let's try 0. Okay, still not good. And then let's try 101. Ah, this is much better. Actually, I prefer using GGTS display and here residuals. And here we go. Everything is between the bars. So after taking the difference, as you can see here, and using uh, moving average of order one and order regressive of order one two, it looks like we have captured the model. Okay. You can use Auro Arima, but still, I, I still don't recommend it, just only to, to make some exploratory analysis. Okay, here is the fun part. Now I'm going to re reproduce the same linear model, but instead of calling the function LM as before, as, as usual, okay, or carrot or something like that, I'm going to call the function Arima. And Arima, I'm going to say, this is the variable that I want to predict. 
this is the order of the noise I'm going to repeat the same linear regression the good old linear regression but now I'm going to use this parameter and this is the regressor that I'm going to use okay if you run this and you look at the summary you cannot distinguish between both models because I actually are the same model so the fact that I'm using Arima to call this function it means that basically I'm trying to predict the logarithm term of GDP using the population without any correlation in the, in the noise and you can see here that the estimation for the intercept is 4.73 and the population of so the slope is 0.17 and here you have exactly the same parameters okay the same uh, residual standard error and the same AIC and so on and so forth why because I'm basically doing the same okay now I'm going to do things better remember that first we took the derivative here and then we show we show that we, we can reproduce, we can cancel all the correlations if we use an error regressive of order one and a moving average of order one. So here that means that I'm going to take an ARIMA for the noise of order one, one, one. Okay? You can take a look at the coefficients, but I prefer to check the residuals directly so the video is not that long. So here you have the, the, the same thing. Actually, again, you can check that fitting with ARIMA and fitting with linear regression is the same. And now let's take a look at the residuals in this case much better now let's take also a look at the partial or collision function and this looks sweet actually so basically what i'm saying with this fit is that i have captured all the correlations in the residuals and at the same time i'm trying to predict the logarithm 10 of gdp versus the population okay i'm going to include the fitted values of both methods in into this data frame because i want to do some plottings forget about that and this looks nice so this is the linear trend that we explained at the beginning of the problem and now you're going to love this one so what if instead of using th this linear regression we introduce correlations in the plot much better so you can see now if you go back and forth you can see that we couldn't explain actually what was happening there so this was related to the fin financial crisis and an economic boom and so on and so forth and now you can see that we have captured pretty well this variability. Why is that? Because now we have Arima noise and Arima noise is taking into account that the past impulses are affecting the future. So once you have a drop in the GDP because of some reason, a financial crisis or whatever, or a terrorist attack or whatever, then you're going to capture the impact of that correlation into the future. So this is a proof that sometimes you have to take, when you have feeding, when you're feeding time series, you have to take a look at correlations because you can improve a lot your mother simply by taking some Arima in, in, into consideration. Okay, sweet. Let's do some forecasting. I'm going to take the data set and I'm going to remove the, da the data points that we've been using, the first 40 data points, and I'm going to compare the traditional linear regression that corresponds to this feeding and the new regression in which we are taking into account ARIMA. Okay, so the idea with forecast now is that we have to provide values for the regression because remember that the model that we have fitted is not only taking into account the past history of Y, but also the regression sex. Okay, so let's plot this. And this is great. You can see that we st just stopped here. And what is happening with linear regression? So linear regression tried to predict this trend. Okay, and now when you're adding new, po new data points, in these points here, basically it's using these data points in order to have this increase. And it's performing really poorly. What is happening with Arima? In the case of Arima, it, it's, it has learned somehow that whenever you have a decrease in the trend, that is going to be correlated with the future. So you don't need to use you don't need to assume that this growing trend is just because you have a background trend. So this growing trend could be just a matter of inertia, a matter of having these correlations into the past. And you can see now that the, the, the prediction is not accurate, of course, because something happened in year 2000. That's why we have removed that part of the series. But still, you can kind of capture something that is going on into the future. Okay, what if we take all the time series? This is going to be uh, something like that. Again, it's interesting again. Because now you can see that traditional linear regression is overconfident. Why is that? Because you're, you don't have any information into the noise. So basically the, the width, the thickness of this confidence layer is, is going to be constant through time. But now we, we have this idea that the farther you are from the last prediction, the more play, the more role are going to play correlations. And that's why you have this thickening into the predi predictive interval. So a quick summary, when you have time series and you do linear regression, you should check correlations into the noise because sometimes adding a very simple model for the noise is going to improve the, the quality of your predictions and also the description of the data. But so far we have considered that the GDP is correlated with 
it's a function let's say of the population at the same time so we are not including lag regression so i'm going to devote that for another video but let me show you what happens here when we try to include some lagins in, in the data so i'm going to use the library tsa which has some advanced functions i'm going to create the data set again and i'm going to call this library quantmod which includes this function lag which is very very handy in order to create a copy of the time series but lag by different amounts okay so here i'm going to call this X, uh, sorry, this x lag is going to be the, the same as population, and I'm going to remove the NAs. This is not necessary here, but whenever you increase this to one, two, three, or four, then you're going to have one, two, three, or four NAs in your data set. Okay, so you can copy and paste this part for future models. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Now I'm going to use the function arima x. It's the same as TSA arima, but I prefer to call it arima x. And x comes from the idea that you're using some predictors there, so you don't you don't mix. This, the, the name of this function with the forecast library function arima okay so let's take a look at the at, at, at the syntax of the function so i'm going to try to predict y which is the log 10 gdp i'm going to use the same order for the noise as before and i'm going to use the the x transf is the, the number of predi the, the predictors lagged with a given amount okay and now i'm going to include this transfer parameter that is going to give me the, the, the order of the R and S parameters there, okay? I'm going to include the mean, which is a kind of drift, and I'm going to use this um, maximum likelihood method because it's more stable and I don't need to provide any initial value, okay? So basically, this is the same model as before, but instead of using arima as in here, I'm using this function, uh, function arima x that is going to be the one that I'm going to use in further videos, okay? So let's take a look at that, and here we go. So you can see that there is no difference. I'm, I'm going forward and backward, and you can see that I have exactly the same plot. Why? Because I have the same model, okay? Let's do some auto plotting. And you can see that this uh, ARIMA model is well-defined, so I don't have any cycle on top of the, of the black cycle. So, so far, so good. And now let's add this to the data point and, and let's compare the predictions. And again, this is definitely, so you can see that both models are the same. So this was this part was to convince you that Arima X is going to do the same as capital A Arima. Okay, now let's try to add some lags. Okay, no, not in this part of the function, but in the description of the transfer function. Okay, let's run this again. And here we go. And I'm going to assume that the log 10 GDP is a function of the population, but not the population right now, but the population for the last eight years. Okay, this is the order I'm, I'm including there. So let's take a look at the data. And here you can see that not, none of these coefficients are significant, meaning that our previous model, the model that we were trying to produce without any delay, without any shift in the data set is accurate enough, okay? So I'm going to leave the more advanced models for other data sets, but you can see that for this data set, I think we have a pretty good description with this model that we have discussed above.